Greetings, I'm Solid Scully, and welcome back to Silent Hill Downpour, where we... What the hell is this game? Uh, whatever. Welcome back to Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Uh, yes, now we are going up against Mr. Vexen Esquire, a dude who is here to collect his debt, apparently store all his money to somebody. <laughs> Even Goofy is getting in on all this. He uh, thinks that uh, Sora owes him a little something. You know, uh, a little monetary compensation for Vexen's uh, protection. Uh, but no, what Vexen is here to do is basically here to collect a little bit of data. Now, uh, in terms of where this is in the timeline, I believe this is... Two, uh, it's either two weeks or a little bit after that. Because, I mean, I know at this point, and again, something that will become relevant as we do get into the next uh, world, is that at this point, Roxas and I believe Shion have already been created. I'm not sure if Shion was created immediately around this point, you know, due to Vexen actually being in Castle Oblivion where Shion originated, or if it's merely just within close proximity or while Sora was still ascending the tower. I'm not entirely too sure, but uh, the point is... Things are getting heated up, Sora is angry that Vexen seems to have done something to Riku, and, uh, well, basically, he alludes to what Riku truly is. And, uh, Vexen is a boss fight. You, you really do have to go all out on this one. Don't let up for a second, because Vexen has attacks that not only hurt, but will completely fuck you up. I cannot stress enough how damaging Vexen's attacks are. Like, I mean, with that little ice block there, he can freeze you, and, uh, I think in his second battle, because yes, of course, there's two battles, uh, he basically attacks you with, you know, ice spikes that are home in, and he's persistent, so don't let your guard down. Also, I wouldn't really advise using Donald, well, unless, of course, you want to chance it, because, well, given the fact that his magical abilities are set at random, yeah, he might occasionally use ice on Vexen, which is not something you want to do to the guy whose entire gimmick is ice. Ugh, jeez. Again, I don't really know what else to tell you, just stuck up on fire cards and hope for the best. Another interesting ability that Vexen also has, which is more of a prominent thing in his second attack is... Uh, sorry, not that. His second boss fight is Auto Life, which is... Once you beat him, you do get that enemy card and it is very useful. In fact, I make great use of that ability, considering how out of practice I am at Rechain of Memories for a certain special video you'll be seeing uh, towards the... I'd say in another two or three parts, because yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming towards the end of Chain of Memories. We're at the final stretch of the game at this point, without any more Disney worlds to explore. I have, this is basically the point where I start including cutscenes in the worlds themselves again, because, well, that's, you know, more so relegated to the main story of Chain of Memories. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Also, it has a really weird voice. I, I know it's one of the development staff voicing Vexen here, but... Uh, what exactly decided to make them think that going ho was a decent inclusion? That's another thing, actually, and uh, I don't mean to hub too much about this, like, I mean, I'm not I'm not talking about this for the sake of, like, making a cheap joke or anything, but, uh, was Vexen initially meant to be female? Because, I mean, given some of his character portrait, his very, uh, lithe appearance, and, well, I mean, his general body structure kind of gives me very... Feminine vibes? Well, I mean, I guess Japanese artwork for males, depending on who they are, tends to be very bitchin' in and of itself, but... Um... Considering the high-pitched nature of his voice, I'm not sure if he was meant to be female, or just someone who was very, uh... Well, I guess, unusual and antisocial, considering the way that Derek Stephen Prince would eventually voice him in the English dub. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just going a little bit too off-topic here. But yes, like all the other organization members before him, Vexen is just going to be evil and plotting, which does little more than cause me a headache. And I uh, do kind of mean that, actually, because in real life I am suffering a headache right at this moment, which is weird for me, because I rarely, if ever, suffer headaches, so I'm curious as to what this is. Uh, I might say my excessive drinking might have something to do with that, but that's... That's uh, dark territory for me personally, so... Let's not uh, think about that right now, and receive this card from the other side of Sora's heart. What does that mean? Well, we'll find out rather soon. It is actually very interesting, because this, uh, for a while, was Chain of Memories exclusive. Like, I mean, if you were playing the game for the first time, you were getting a glimpse into the future right here. At the time, you wouldn't have really known what this all meant, uh, save for a few bonus hints right at the end of uh, Riku's Reverse Rebirth scenario, where you see a mysterious blonde-haired boy, which 
It bears remarkable resemblance to the hooded figure you see in uh, the secret ending of Kingdom Hearts 1. And anyway, now that Vexen is, well, basically working in favour of the organisation and going his own way about things, I guess Luxine, Marluxia, and the Axel of Rose has decided to eliminate him. I gotta say though, like, I mean, while for a first time player this might seem a little bit confusing, I actually really do like the manipulation game going on here, but I guess it only really um, comes as a bit of an appeal to me because I know, you know, who's working for who here, but, well, it is interesting nonetheless to see how they just sort of use Axel for their own purposes, only for Axel to, well, without spoiling anything, let's just say he has motives of his own. And he does indeed mean that, because while, I guess I can probably spoil this, while Axel is working for the organization, as in with the other members, well, his motives are questionable to say the least. So, uh, yeah, I guess also to reiterate previous points that I talked about literally two minutes ago, in terms of how I'm handling the words from this point on, all cutscenes are being shown, and while I am still just sort of showing a couple of battles but moving on with the main plot just for the sake of, you know, cutting out grinding and everything, uh, yeah, you will get a decent chunk of these worlds, even if they are a lot shorter since I'm not having to cram like three pointless Disney filler worlds into one. So yeah, the filler is over and now we're back to the good stuff. And uh, doubly so, because this is, well, the point where things really do begin to heat up and Again, like I said in the previous part, the build-up of Chain of Memories is... excellent. And now we arrive in Twilight Town, the peaceful sunset town that makes me very nostalgic for my youth because... Uh, well, I mean, I don't really know about anybody else, but Kingdom Hearts 2... Like, I guess maybe it's more so relevant if you were growing up in the 2000s. Like, you know, you were spending time in the summer, there was nothing to do but, you know, hang out with your friends, go skateboarding, and just generally chill out at the beach. It, uh, it's very nostalgic to me, and like the sunset hues of Twilight Town especially resonate with me because, you know, I spent many an afternoon just skateboarding, listening to rock music, and just having a really chill afternoon with my friends, man. It's, uh, it's both a nice, but also kind of a bitter memory because as you get older, you come to realize that those sorts of experiences and times are never going to happen again, and at the end of the day, all you can really do is just cherish these memories that you have for the rest of your life, and, well, as you get older you find that things start to fade from your memory, which I guess maybe as an adult it does kind of make Chain of Memories a little bit more impactful to me than when I was, you know, I guess when people were playing it when they were kids. Because this stuff can fade in time, and, well, holding on to that sort of stuff becomes difficult. And this scene is also one that I do find very, very sweet, even if it is, well, basically more of Naminé's manipulation where she basically sketched up an entire life that she and Sora have lived. And, uh, well, as we will soon come to see, yeah, this isn't exactly exclusive to Sora himself. There is a lot more going on than meets the eye. Ah, uh, treasured memories. But of course, we see that Nomine isn't all she appears to be either. What is this? Apologies? Well, Nomine, what do you have to be apologizing for? Surely you have done nothing wrong, except for, you know, all the things that you did to manipulate his memory. Again, if you probably couldn't tell with the other previous scenes with the organization members, yeah, Nomine isn't exactly the bad guy here. Which is an interesting talking point that I will... I think I'll save for a future part, because I think, especially in the next world, it becomes a little bit more relevant there than it is here. Because for the time being, well, we're skating on thin ice, but everybody's still cooperative. I don't know, it's just Sora's angst that, again, I have brought up in many previous parts that really does... It really does make Chain of Memories that much more impactful from a character standpoint. But yes, this is Chain of... Uh, no, <laughs> this is Twilight Town stuck in the mysterious sunset dimension, which, again, from a level perspective looks really nice, even though, like every other world in the game, it is basically reusing the same sort of color layout depending on which cards you use. But at the same time, though, I really do love how Twilight Town looks here. Uh, I will say, though, in, that in terms of soundtrack, I don't think the GBA quite does it justice, and the, the Rechain of Memories version of this song, uh, oh god, I'm trying to remember what it was called. Oh, fuck it, uh, screw it, it'll come back to me, but the point is, uh, this song, 
which is basically used for this version of Twilight Town, is absolutely my favorite. Especially in Reach Chain of Memories, because it adds like a little uh, harmonica sort of piece to it, which really does kind of drive home the lazy afternoons. Oh, that was it! Ha! Got it in the end. But yeah, it really does drive on the whole lazy afternoon sort of vibe. And, uh, well, I appreciate it. I mean, I do like Kingdom Hearts 2's version of the song as well, but uh, I don't know. The harmonica really adds something in my eyes. But again, that being said though, I mean, the GBA sound chip does a decent job of portraying the tune as is, and well, I guess this is the original song itself, so... You know, go to town on it. And of course, we have the battle theme for Twilight Town. In actually pretty decent uh, form for the GBA, which is surprising how it has some songs that are pretty good, some songs that are, yeah, could have been done a little bit better, and will be done better on more powerful technology like, you know, the PlayStation 2 and all that. But yeah, we also do kind of fight the generic sort of heartless and soldier enemies in this uh, town. Again, I think maybe as more of a... Well, I'm not really sure. Maybe it's more of a homage to Kingdom Hearts 2, even though in that form of the town you fought nobodies, which uh, enemies will be getting to in Kingdom Hearts 2 if I ever get around to that game. I don't know. I mean, they're a lot stronger, and you do get a lot more experience points for them, so much like with... Uh, actually, I'd say this place is a pretty decent sort of place to grind, really, if you're looking for powerful enemies to grind, because, I mean, they're the same sort of stuff that you fought before, and while the card values that the enemies use are higher, you know, you shouldn't have too much trouble. But at the same time though, these are also, uh, given the fact that we are getting to the end game parts of the game, this is also one of the areas where uh, things are a lot more straight and narrow, so you you don't exactly have to worry about, okay, going to this store to face this enemy, going to this store to get a bit of plot, going to this store to face the final boss. But a bing, you do the thing, Disney thing happens, and Sora can go on his mem uh, merry way down memory lane where he skips down the yellow brick road. Or something or other. Actually, is Wizard of Oz owned by Disney? Uh, I don't think so, just yet. Who does own the rights, actually? Uh, I guess maybe the author's estate, possibly. Whatever. I mean, uh, I guess if there was any sort of complaints to be had with um, Chain of Memories level design in terms of the hub, well, quote-unquote hub layouts where you're navigating around doors and everything, I guess would be the lack of recognizable areas, say for specific boss arenas, because like, I mean, I guess a lot of people probably would have been interested to explore certain areas and easter eggs that you would have found in Kingdom Hearts 1, like, you know, as use an example, Ariel's Grotto, or I guess like some of the laboratory areas from like, you know, Halloween Town or whatever. Yeah, uh, you know, I guess something that probably would have flushed out the game, but... Eh, I don't know. You make do with what you got, I suppose. Because, I mean, I'm pretty sure the usual spot and, you know, some, uh, maybe even the clock tower itself would have been a cool location to see, considering, uh, who exactly visits that clock tower for three, fi for three, five, eight over two days and, uh, two, the prologue, <laughs> whatever. I'm not making sense anymore. In terms of anything else, though, uh, besides having two battles with Vexen, I don't know, man, this is just a really chill level and, uh, I guess in a similar... Well, I guess actually in a more fitting way to the Winnie the Pooh level, it does kind of give a calm before the storm, because while things are building up, you have a nice little reprieve with a bit of mystery in a lot less of a threatening way, just in more of a, what is this place? This feels familiar, but not. But I mean, let's just say, things will escalate quite quickly the next time we face Vexen, because for as chill as this place is, well, the organization is plotting, and uh, Axel is about to heat things up. And since Vexen is a ice user, well, do the math. Fire beats ice, but water beats fire, and fire can be extinguished with a lack of air, so wouldn't an organization member with the power of stopping oxygen be powerful? Eh, who knows, really. At the same time, though, like, I mean, at this point in the game, I think you can possibly see what I mean when, you know, mixing and matching your cards gives you access to a lot of different abilities. I mean, I will, I, will, I will admit in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 where you could, you know, set that sort of stuff to the reaction commands or depending on what sort of magical abilities you had at your disposal, you know, and in terms of what you could equip, it made it a lot easier and simpler to use, but at the same time, I think the way Chain of Memories handles it with, you know, different sorts of abilities like, you know, Teleport, Warpinator and all that sort of stuff, you get a lot more variety to play with, I think, and it's in-depth enough so you can customize your deck to contain what sort of abilities you want. But again, like, and like I do keep alluding to with, you know, Birth by Sleep's command deck sort of thing, it's not the sort of thing where you go through an overly convoluted system to have a simple press the triangle button to do the thing, wait for it to recharge, and use it again. 
It's all a matter of, you know, what sort of cards you have at your disposal, and you can use them, well, at your discretion, without uh, being a little bit too cavalier about it, because, you know, you do have to reload, and unless, of course, you have a few potions on hand, those cards won't be coming back, so, again, the minor strategy elements, as I've mentioned so many times in the past, they add a lot to the game, man. But alas, we get to the mansion. The mystic mansion, where Ansem the Wise has made his humble abode. Maybe it's his holiday home. In fact, I'm actually kind of curious who lived there originally. I mean, uh, again, this isn't the real Twilight Town, but I mean, it is kind of fascinating to see who really lives there. Oh well. Uh, maybe in Kingdom Hearts 4 or Union Cross, if they ever bother to explain it. Maybe it's the Master of Masters' summer home, where he goes to put his feet up and get away from the foretellers who are complete dumbasses who fight over a, a, a traitorous missing page. Unchained X was fucking stupid. Well, then again, it was kind of predicted to happen, so whatever. Enough about this. We're just exploring around the town, and I do kind of wish we could... Again, I said this before, but I mean, I do kind of wish we got to explore more familiar areas of Twilight Town. And I, I mean, especially for this point in the game, it would have been more interesting than exploring the same areas we had in Kingdom Hearts 1. Oh, well. But alas, Vexen is here to be evil and plotting and have one final memory uh, in Sora's brain before he promptly forgets him and then remembers him again, thus giving Kingdom Hearts coded a uh, bit of purpose. Jesus Christ, that is, uh... Yeah, I'm with you, Vexen. It is actually very interesting to uh, see how the organization I'm manipulating Sora, though, because, like, I mean... Even if they can't manipulate him via Nomine, there are... Well, as Marluxia will allude to in, the fu in uh, probably the penultimate part of this commentary... Yeah, there are more than there is more than one way to uh, get a Keyblade Master under their control, and uh, they have no qualms about using that method. But yeah, all of this is basically referring to Roxas, since... I'm not really sure whether or not it was stated or just sort of fan theory, but apparently all nobodies wind up in Twilight Town. I guess kind of giving credence to the whole neither light nor darkness and they appear on the twilight road to nightfall. It's a uh, interesting, but I suppose it does make it a key location where Xemnas could recruit all these people into the organization. But yeah, it basically alludes to what Riku truly is. I know who he is. But do you? Uh, well, I mean, you're gonna find out eventually anyway, so... I think I think it was obvious enough that this wasn't the real Riku since, you know, Reverse Rebirth scenario was following the real Riku, and the fact that we haven't seen hide nor hair of, you know, the King, or any other sorts of characters relegated to Riku's storyline, probably goes to show exactly where Riku is at the moment. But yeah, this is the boss fight you really need to watch out for, because Vexen will hit hard, he will kick your ass, and, well, make liberal use of your cloud cards, because... Vexen scares me. I go to bed every night having nightmares of Vexen. In, in fact, in terms of my top fears of all time, it's existential panic, taxes, uh, Alma Wade as the number one top fear, and uh, right beneath her is Vexen, because this boss fight scares me. Oh god. I don't, I don't even know what to say, like, I mean... All I can really suggest for you is keep on the offensive, uh, make sure you have some zero cards on hand to break his cards, and, well, really, pray to whatever deity you worship. God, Jesus, Santa Claus, uh, Coffee Beans, uh, our lords and masters of the Disney Corporation to save your ass, because... Oh god, Vexen. And uh, as I mentioned before, he does have auto life on, so uh, by the time you whittle down that health bar, don't be surprised if he gets a sudden second wind where he regains his health back. Uh, again, it's a very... If you're not prepared for it, this boss fight will be nigh impossible, and uh, on my first playthrough... Well, uh, I think I mentioned this in the commentary itself, both the Trickmaster and Vexen were the banes of my existence, and I've had a fear of Vexen ever since. Uh, but enough about me, I suppose. At the same time, though, it does make it really rewarding to beat Vexen in and of itself, because you do get auto life, so that means all that health if you happen to die, well, you get it back. I'm not entirely sure if it counts it as a death, uh, uh, in terms of like, you know, final ranking and all that sort of stuff. I want to say, uh, no, but then again it could kind of be like Metal Gear Solid, where if you have a ration equipped and 
uh, you know, Snake loses all his health, you end up causing that as a death anyway, because he had to use the ration to stay alive. I don't know how that really works in a ranking sense, but... Eh, whatever. Incidentally, though, I do really like the nice back... Well, the nice background if it isn't in between frames, because... Uh, GBA hardware, you know, where you have the mansion in the background. I don't know. It uh, makes for some nice scenery change. Especially since it's uh, been a while since we have some, you know, decent nature stages. Well, I mean, I wouldn't really consider Twilight Town a nature stage per se, but it's nice, man. The beauty of nature is just wondrous. Oh, Cloud, you must save me! Yeah, uh, even though Vexen has auto life. Which you'll be seeing quite soon. And, uh, yeah, make sure to suck up on healing cards, because that's, uh... Well, more often than not in Chain of Memories, that's usually one of the cards that I tend to use the least if I happen to be particularly skilled at using my cards right, because... Again, like, if you don't have enough of them, and something I did actually kind of learn in my initial playthroughs is that, again, you can find yourself taking a lot of damage very quickly, and, uh... Well, let's just say if you run out of cards and are busy reloading while an enemy uses a pretty powerful attack, you can be screwed quite easily. And that is also the spike attack that I talked about. It can be very persistent, and, uh, let's just say Sora will be, uh... Nice bit of borscht. Yes, Cloud. Attack him! Oh no, he used the auto life, which, uh... Well, it didn't regain as much life as I thought it would. But I mean, even still, that could be the difference between life and death if you were fighting your heart out and you had very little cards, because... As I said before, you know, the more you use your cards, the more they're reduced, and unless, of course, you have some potions on hand, they won't be coming back, so... You can actually end up in a situation where, you know, you end up... Where, you know, you run out of cards, you have to reload. And, uh, well, in regular battles, you have the option of running against the screen and getting out of there, but I don't think that applies to boss battles, so you kind of have no choice but to die and restart at your last save point. So again, it does make boss encounters uh, very much do or die, which, well, if if Vexen is the beginning of the, oh, let's just say bullshitty boss fights, uh, let's just say there are a few more to come. Again, uh, the only two boss fights I wouldn't really count as bullshitty at this point in the game would be our final battle against Luxine, which will be coming up quite soon, and, uh, well, I guess the Riku battles, depending on how you want to play them, but, you know, not exactly the sort of thing where you can just let your guard down and, you know, breeze through it in an afternoon. But alas, Vexen is finally destroyed, and I'm sure nothing bad will happen to this wacky scientist of robot-building proportions. Just, uh, let there be a hint to you. I just got us some lovely slights, like Tornado, the, well, basically the one that does use a pretty cool power-up. Now, uh, this scene greatly differs depending on which version of the game you're playing. Here, this is, well, surprisingly brutal by Kingdom Hearts standards, because what happens to Vexen here is quite, uh, well, rough. Again, he's being evil and plotting, but you will soon see that, well, yeah, he's put in a position where he can't be evil and plotting. But, uh, in Rechain of Memories, well, let's just say that, uh, well, he sure does get roasted. In more ways than one. But alas, when Vexen decides to talk about the plot, somebody has to be in here to stop him, because he's going to become my Lucius Pawn, which was kind of obvious given the fact that we as a player saw them talking about that earlier. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot that they didn't actually say my Lucius' name when he and Sora met. What is this? It's Axel, and he is, uh... Yeah, basically, my Lucius is about to be executed. Now, what happened happening here is that basically, well, Axel is... basically gonna decapitate, well, in quotation marks here, he's basically gonna slash his throat and, uh, kill Vexen that way, but in the Rechain of Memories, what Axel does, and a little bit more fittingly, actually, considering his theme, is that he basically sets Vexen on fire. I'm not kidding, and that's how he dies, he burns to death. I mean, despite the fact that he does fade away in, you know, Disney-esque fashion, uh, it's still a very brutal way to go. And seriously, look at how fucking sadistic Axel is here. If this is the guy that eventually became the likeable Joker that, you know, we all know and love in future games. And yes, despite the fact that nobody's aren't meant to have emotions, Vexen is scared. Oh no, I can't believe Dream Drop Distance betrayed us all with that point on logic. Whatever. Axel, do the honors and eliminate this pest. 
Anyway, on that note, I am Slaughter Scully, keep it new metal, and next time on Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories... Well, let's just say tempers will be strained, and, uh, we're gonna take a trip down to the beach to get a bit of peace in mind, because... Well... Things are crazy right now, dudes and dudettes. Catch you later.